Sparrows are notoriously difficult to identify. A lot of them are shades of tan and brown. Uh, it's hard to get a good view of them sometimes. They'll just be very quick looks. So we're gonna break down the 10 most common sparrows with tips on how to identify them. One thing I do really like about sparrows is there's not normally a ton of change between winter and spring plumage or males and females. So I feel like that does make it a little easier. And we're going to be talking about some key things to look at for identification. And we're gonna use the bird board to talk about where you might see them. So I thought this was a cool way to break it down. I have sparrows you might see kind of by your house. And these don't necessarily always fall into these categories, but it's a good place to start. So red is by your house. Uh, blue is by water. Green is more forest. Purple is like in a thicket, like in those really tangly vines and that really thick scrubby stuff. And then yellow is more by field and open areas. So this is only gonna cover some of the most common sparrows you might encounter, uh, with of course some bonuses as well as we go through these different species. But first I wanna talk about how do you identify a sparrow to begin with? If you see one, what do you even look for first? What do you focus on? Now the first thing that I would suggest is looking at the habitat. Where is this bird located? Where are you seeing it? And then the next thing I would look at is the behavior. What is that bird doing? How is it acting? Third thing I would look at is the field markings. So the colors of the bird, certain characteristics, like how big the bill is, what color is it, uh, what color is the feathers, uh, all that kind of stuff. Then vocalization, was it making any kind of noise? And then finally, I would think about the range. So is that bird supposed to be in that area? Sometimes you get rare stuff, but a lot of times things will kind of stick to the range map more or less of this bird supposed to be here was likely that species. So with those five tips in mind, let's start going through these different categories of sparrows you might encounter and how to identify them. To start out, we have number one, the house sparrow. And this is actually a non-native species that came over from Europe. We actually brought them over at some point and they're very aggressive and they love hanging out in urban environments. So they're at home in neighborhoods. You can see them almost anywhere it feels like. Funny enough, they don't really like some of the more natural areas all the time. And they are notorious for being really aggressive. So specifically with bluebirds, they'll go in there and unfortunately they'll kill the babies sometimes. They'll chase birds out of birdhouses. So that's one reason people don't like them a lot. Other people don't see that side of them. They just think they're very cute and very adorable. But they're shades of brown. The males have more black on them and some patterning on the head. But they'll hang out, you know, in your bushes, uh, on top of your house, at your bird feeders. They'll chase off other species. So they're one of the most common sparrow species that you'll probably encounter. And an interesting fact is they don't really make a traditional song. So they have just kind of these chipping noises they'll make. Next up, we have the American tree sparrow, AM tree for American tree. And this is one that you often see in the winter. So when I started birding, I didn't even know we had more than one type of sparrow. I just assumed they were all house. Uh, but in the winter, the American tree sparrows will come down further south and they have a rufous, so like a reddish eye line and a reddish cap. And normally they have a dark spot on their stomach and they'll hang out under the bird feeder normally, but they will also go to the feeders. And especially in the winter, you can get huge groups of these hanging out. So their behavior is they'll be um, kind of hanging out in the ground and then they might flush and go to some of the bushes. They won't exclusively be around your house. They're not like the house sparrow where that's normally where you find them. They'll also be in the forest and on roadsides and things like that. But I see a lot of them at the bird feeder. Next up, we have one of the birds that you can see in fields, but they will also come to bird feeders. It's kind of why they're in the between area. And that is the chipping sparrow. And they can look very similar to the American tree sparrow, but they're gonna be smaller. And adults have a black eye line instead of that rufous eye line. Kind of grayish uh, stomach as well. And they make a chipping trill noise. So if they're in the place where you live in the summer, you may hear this noise quite a bit. At least where I live, they take the place of the American tree sparrows. Like the tree sparrows come in the winter, they leave the chipping sparrows kind of take over their spot. 
And uh, the juvenile chipping sparrow is one of the species that causes a lot of ID issues because some of those features aren't as defined and they can look like other sparrow species. So make sure to double check that you are not seeing young chipping sparrows if you think you have a different sparrow species um, that's showing up at your house or that you've seen. So that's just a good one to keep in mind because they look kind of quite different from the adults. Next up, way over here in our bramble category, we have the white-throated sparrow. And this is one that will also come to bird feeders, although I don't see them there as much. But if they are, they'll probably be on the ground. And they really like to do the kicking their feet back and forth to uncover seed. A lot of these species will do that, but they're one in particular. I see them do this a lot. Uh, but adults are fairly easy to tell apart because they do have a white throat. They have some yellow on the head with black and white patterning. And they make that very characteristic vocalization. It's kind of a sign of spring, at least where I live. Uh, but they really like the thicket areas. Sometimes they'll come to the feeders. Um, but normally if I see them, they're hanging out in that really scrubby, really thick habitat. And they're lower uh, in the ground unless they're coming up to sing. Along with white-throated sparrows, keep an eye out for the slightly larger white-crowned sparrows. Adults have black and white on the top of their head without any yellow, although young birds have cream and brown on their head instead. Watch for these sparrows on the ground, in thick vegetation, and near forest edges. They also love to use their feet to kick up seeds and may be mixed in with other sparrow species. Next up, we have the song sparrow. And this is one that, at least where I live, they're singing nonstop in the summer, basically. So it was one of the first bird vocalizations I really learned because I just heard it so, so often. And they have a lot of bold streaking on the stomach. Sometimes they'll have a dark spot. Otherwise, there's shades of kind of brown, gray. You might see a little more reddish rufous color depending on where you live. Sometimes there's some differences in coloration. Um, but look for a lot of that bold streaking, and they also have a mustache stripe. But they'll be hanging out, you know, in the forest area. There's our first bird in that more forest category. We'll come to bird feeders sometimes. They'll hang out in more wet areas. So they're kind of very versatile. They'll kind of go wherever. They'll go to the thickets. Um, but a very common species. And this is one you should learn very well because once you have this one down, it helps uh, to kind of eliminate it from other species because it's so abundant. Moving on, we have the swamp sparrow. And they can look similar to the song sparrow sometimes, but they're going to have more rufous to their coloration. And so look for that more reddish tone. Males have a reddish cap as well. And they like to hang out by the edge habitats of water. So they'll normally be low. Sometimes they'll be hanging out in the reeds. Sometimes they'll be on the shoreline. They do venture away from water sometimes, but a lot of the times I see them in wet areas or by big bodies of water, rivers, creeks, streams, lakes, and they have a trilling vocalization. Number seven, another forest category bird. We have the Lincoln Sparrow. Now this is one that causes a lot of identification issues because they're kind of an oddball out somewhat with how versatile they are. Like they kind of show up anywhere and they look similar to a lot of these other species. But what I want you to remember with the Lincoln Sparrow is fine streakings. Think of like one of those really fine tip Sharpies or like a pen and ink type streaking. With the other species, it's a little more bold. They'll often have some buffy or like tannish light wash on the top of the stomach as well, where it's lighter below and a light eye ring. So keep an eye out for those features. I normally see Lincolns kind of on edge habitats, like the edges of forest, but they can kind of show up anywhere depending on the time of year. Number eight, the Savannah Sparrow. And in certain areas, this may be the most common sparrow that you're seeing or hearing. And they love to hang out in the open field areas. So sometimes they'll be hanging out in the fields, they'll 
fly up and they'll go down in the actual field itself or they'll go to the areas around the field. So hanging out in the trees near that area, sometimes they do come to backyards if you live by those fields, um, but they love to hang out in those spots. For identification, a lot of the time they have a yellow mark by the eye. So that's a really good thing to look for. It's not 100% all the time there, but normally it is. Otherwise, they're a very light stomached species with streaking, but it's not as blurry as you might see in other species. So kind of lighter colors overall, uh, like compared to the song. Song feels like it has a little more blurry streaking. Savannah is a little more defined, not as small as you would see in Lincolns though. And they will sit up on posts, telephone poles, that kind of stuff. They do like to sit up, even though they will go down into some of those other areas, such as the grasses and the fields. Next up, number nine, the fox sparrow. And this is one of the chunkier sparrows you might see. So it's gonna look bigger than some of these other species. And they'll hang out in the forest areas, the real thick stuff, they do love to be in there. And they have a lot of different subspecies. So the color of these birds is gonna look different. A lot of streaking on the chest, at least the ones by us, they look very rufous. So a lot of reddish color, a lot of streaking, and just a really big sparrow overall. Very skulky, they're another one that loves to do the thing with their feet where they kick up the debris. And in times when you get weather you might not expect, like snowstorms, I see them coming to feeders. And finally, before we move on to our bonus birds, number 10, the field sparrow. They're another one that loves to hang out in those open areas, normally when there's a few trees there. So if it's like an open field, there's a tree, you know, sparse tree every once in a while, they really love those areas and they'll hang out at the base of those trees, on the tops of those trees and sing. They have a small pink bill, face is kind of a plain gray with some like orangey accents but they really love those open habitats. So in areas where you have savanna sparrows, you may also have those fields. And like I said, they love those areas where there's sparse trees like oak savanna habitats. And finally, we have some bonus birds. These don't have sparrow in their name, but they actually are sparrows. So we have the dark-eyed junco. They're a very common bird at bird feeders, especially in the winter when they move further south. People call them snowbirds because of this. Sometimes it's a signal that uh, winter is coming. That's something our grandpa always used to say. Oh, it's the first junco. Winter is gonna be here soon. And there's a ton of different subspecies of junco. By me, we have the slate colored. So males are gray with a lighter stomach. Females are a little more brown, but there are different subspecies depending on where you go. They love to be at the base of the bird feeder, but they'll also be in the forest areas, um, gritting on the side of the road, then they'll flush to the trees. So a very abundant bird species that you'll probably run into at some point. And then our final bonus sparrow, the towhee. In the Eastern United States, you have the Eastern towhee. They're very big birds, so very chunky and very skulky. They love hanging out in the shrubby, viney areas. Uh, they will come to bird feeders too, and they'll be on the ground normally. So the Eastern towhee has a lot of rufous, black, white, pretty distinctive coloration. Females are lighter than males. And then in the West, you have the spotted towhee. So it looks essentially similar, but with some spots on the back. Uh, where the eastern towhee does not have those spots, and they do hybridize sometimes. Uh, but the eastern makes a really distinctive call that sounds like they're saying, drink your tea, with kind of a trill at the end of it, but it's a really distinctive sparrow to look out for. So there you have it, those are 10 plus sparrows. Uh, with tips on how to identify them. Do go easy on yourself, it's tough. Sometimes you just get a quick glance. Uh, feel free to come back to this video and check it out. Let me know what you think about this format in the comments below and make sure to check out our other identification videos. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.